Yes. Good foot. Yeah, thank you very much. I feel very thank welcome you. on the show, I can say. <laughs> So we lay down smoke, a welcome max and a round of applause for you. That's the cause. What's going on, man? <laughs> man, I'm good, man. Just, you know, puffing this Cali Fine Pine and chilling it right now, man, you know. Oh, we. Hey, that man. That always yeah. sticky. <laughs> That's how I feel. Hey. Yeah, shit, last time I got it, I didn't even need my medical card no more, man. I just went in the store, man. Shit, we legalized it recreationally now, too. So man, awesome, awesome. Next time I need to do some. We can start out with the medical. Mm-hmm. I don't give a damn. Do some, but we need to work towards that recreational too. Goddamn, I want to feel like I'm in Cali. Goddamn. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, I'm about to, I'm about to yeah. pollute the air my damn self. Yeah, no, I'm only talking this much shit because I'm finna get off papers. Tomorrow I can talk a lot of bullshit, but tonight I'm still yeah, like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Round of applause for Chilla. Well, what an yeah, yeah, One more day. One more day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some hours, not even 24. Some hours. But here at Canada, do you see me on the screen? I don't bail. Hell yeah. yeah. Right. Gone. Papers is gone. But Harris County, if you're listening to me, I was just playing. I stay innocent. I ain't doing nothing. Matter <laughs> <laughs> of fact, she's wearing a nun outfit as we speak. She's got a crucifix yeah. and everything in her hands. All of that. With diamonds yeah. on it blinging, nigga. We show love, okay? I'm just saying. I don't do nothing. I don't even have this put on in my hand. I'm just playing. I'm just playing. <laughs> It's a celebration. Look, I'm you know, when we got the palm trees and the palm weed, man, it's all me. Come out this way. We blaze one for the nation, you know. What it is. Already ready. I already got the plan. I already know. I already know. We already know. Shit. Yeah, man. Let's get back to smoke. Yeah, you know what I'm let's get back to local smoke. Like, talk to us. Like, you know, what, you know, what got you started? What, who was your influences? You know, all that fly shit. Yeah, what well, got me started way back. Like, I started. Looking, I, I got. I got into hip hop when I was five years old, and uh, back then it was uh, Beefy Boys and, and uh, Fat Boys and shit. And, and then when I got a little older, my, one day I was like eight years old, nine years old, something. Something like that. My mom came home. She had the Ice Tea Power album, and she put on. Oh it. man! I love it. Listen, listen to this song. This is your mom. Listen to this one. And that's it. And after that, like, I, I was I was hooked on. It and, and later on, as I got older, that became my outlet to write. You know, write my lyrics down to get get shit off my chest and deal with you know my own shit. You know what I'm saying? And and then I just started spitting. Hey, you know. Uh, Start doing what it did, and then uh, and then fast forward all the way up until uh, 2004, and I, I got um, I got in touch with this label, Mob Life Records, that had Mo Cream Shakur at the time signed, and uh, and uh, yeah, we started networking a lot, um, and yeah, Mo Cream Shakur, that's Pox brother for those that don't know Thug Life right there, but anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, we started networking a lot and shit, and I got in contact with DJ King Assassin, and from there, it just I, I got I got brought into the uh, City Mob and Productions family. That's uh, Mike Mosley. Mike Mosley produced for Pac, produced for Four E Forty, produced for B Legit, TQ. That whole first TQ album, they never saw me co- coming. That's uh, Mike Mosley. He produced the song on my first album and shit too. And um, yeah, and shit after that. It, I just kept on going and going, smashing, smashing this songs with the realest JT, the biggest, biggest fan queen. It just, it just fucking, it just started happening. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and now I run my own label, not under no other label. And um, you know I'm doing doing my own thing. You know, helping other artists out, get on. You know, um, and trying to do it the right way. You feel me? No doubt. 
Um, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. Now, now, look, you rep in the Bay Area, obviously, um, and especially yeah. you from a young age, you know, with the culture of hip hop and it leading to the catharsis for your creative outlets of it. Were you were you born and bred, as y'all say, out on the turf? You know, coming from the earth. The pedigree you follow in are some very distinguished names, you know, and, you know, of course, Richie Rich, you know, Too Short, you know, E-40, Matt yep. Dre, Conscious, uh, yeah, Conscious yeah, Daughters, yeah, you know, yeah. Paris, you know, uh-huh. so, um, so definitely in terms of your ascent as you came through the ranks, because definitely your collaborations, your interactions are a who's who. And, oh, yeah, shout out to DJ King Assassin. What up? You know, yeah, that's um, my big homie. That's my I wouldn't be where I'm at without him. That's yeah, that's shout out to King Assassin because he's done a lot for a lot of folk. Um, pretty much yeah. as you progress, when did you realize? Because it always takes you know time to really sharpen the pen in terms of when you slicing and dicing on the mic, getting it right. When did you know that yeah. your lyrics were ready to go in terms of the ill flow, doing what you do? She honestly like. I mean, I just I don't I don't know if I if I had that kind of feeling like if they're ready because even before I polished them up I was putting shit out like I just I just keep on going progressing and elevating as I go along so and, right. and yeah so that's that's basically how I did it but I would say uh, I I started perfecting my skills around uh, the time that I linked up with Mob Life and shit like that. Okay. Definitely, because then, definitely. because that, after I got that first email, you know what I'm saying, uh, from Mob Life, and, and they was asking me if I want to do a song with Mo Prem at the time, and uh, but they was they was charging me for it anyway. That's a different story. Uh, but I got motivated. I got really fucking motivated because you know here I was uh, an artist that man. I, I was I was watching Outlaws Worldwide DVD at home. You know what I'm saying? I was. I've been bumping Pac and the Outlaws since forever, and then now all of a sudden I had the opportunity, you know what I'm saying, to work with his brother. So around that time in 2004, that's that's what I say is when everything really started happening. That's when I felt like I was ready to progress to where, you know, and keep on going and keep on going. You know what I'm saying? Because there was word, there word. wasn't actually a time before that also around 2003, 2002, 2003, something like that. I got really caught up in the streets and I, I really didn't give a fuck about nothing. Uh, music wise or nothing and, and I was about to you know what I'm saying but something got me into uh, start getting at it again and right when I did that's when that shit happened so Definitely. what do you think what, what is it that that made you change paths like you know you say you was in the street life what made you just uh, one of my homies, start getting uh, focused one, yeah one homies, uh, yeah one of my homies blew his head off and shit and I had to bury him and and the other homies was getting locked up, and you know I just seen too much of that shit, man. And you know what I'm saying? And I got to a point where I was like, you know, if I keep this up, I'm gonna end up dead. My mom died uh, before she even hit 40 herself. So, mm, uh, man, I'm sorry to hear that. And my uncle, he died a year later, and my stepdad, he got 15 to life when I was like, well, back in like '89, so I was like eight years old. So man. I was raising that. You know what I'm saying? I was raising that shit. My yeah. So would you would it be fair to say that you are um you are or was a gang member because you know the name Lope the Smoke? Uh no, nah, I don't I didn't bang. Like up here in the Bay, yeah, we have we, we don't have bloods and crips in the Bay. We have we have North Daniels, they, we have Sudanios, you know what I'm saying? That's red and blue up here. Okay. Uh, and then we have a bunch of different blocks and turfs and shit like that. But I was a hustler. That's what I was. Right. I wasn't like I, I, I didn't bang. I got family right. that bang, but I don't bang. Right. Okay. Um, if, and if I can come in on a Salute. second, because uh, oh, uh, ladies first, and Chilla, go ahead. I'll come in after you. Okay. I was just gonna ask, since y'all were talking about that, just what would he say to the the artists that are waiting until they get some kind of peck of of stardom to start trying to get gangsta and get in the streets and. and just then realizing that it's, it's not what they thought it was, that studio gangster is totally different from the street shit. Because apparently a lot of them are yeah. waiting until they get older and get in the limelight a little bit to start acting retarded. So what would you say to that? Yeah, yeah. I'd say knock it off, you know, just, just be, you know what I'm saying, to all these 
all these youngsters, you know, that life is not the business. Real talk. I buried too many people, seen too many people get locked up. That life is not the business. You know what I'm saying? So I, I advise everybody to, to build your brain, you know what I'm saying, and, and try something better. Because, yeah, that shit only leads to heartache and, 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 and then it sticks with you even when you're out of the lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, so that shit stays with you forever. Yeah. Um, now, we have a 424. Yeah. Hold on. We have a 424 call. Okay. What's going on? 424. That's nephew, that's nephew Michael. That's nephew Michael. Hey, what's up, nephew what's Michael? That's why I've got no rhyme rock. All right, right all right. Yeah, what's going, yeah, what's on, going on, man? What's going Yo, on, you know, man? Y'all, uh, you know, when you start talking about the gang thing and stuff like that, I don't think nobody can explain it better than me. You know what I mean? I had to slide yeah. in there. Oh, man. Yeah, you know, like, go ahead, man. Look, change, we, you know. look, 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 nephew Mike, we, we appreciate God. you because I was, yeah, because I was about to chop it up in terms of asking a little bit inquisitive because a lot of people are familiar, you know, in terms of what goes on in L.A. with the Bloods and Crips. You know, but a lot of people don't really know, like, you know, Loke was saying in terms of the Bay Area, you know, Northern California, it's a different vibe. You know, where the Nortangos are the Northern California Mexicans. And also, too, in terms of neighborhoods, you know, where you have some of the most infamous. You got Filmo, you know, shout yeah. out to Rapping Forte representing Filmo. You got East 22nd, a.k.a. the Murder Dudes. You got Mosswood. You know, you got yeah, Oak Park and Sacramento. Well, okay, all right. Well, um, break it you down. Know, break it down. For a minute, when I was in the when I was in the seventh grade, man, my mama called herself moving me from down here, from the Compton area, from the Watts area, from Linwood, and called uh-huh. herself moving me to Oakland. We moved to Berkeley first. You know what okay, I mean? So yeah. I played youth football at San Pablo Park. Went to Longfellow oh, School in Berkeley. You know what I mean? We lived in Oakland. Uh. You know, from when, even back in the day, we used to ride the bar and all that type of stuff. So the difference is, is that when you're dealing with Filmo, you're dealing with Funk Town, you're dealing with dudes like that that come from that area. Back then, they were hustlers. So each right. area had their own crew. It's totally different than the blood and the crypt thing that go on. O- uh, up north, Oakland, you know, outside of the Northeños, they were, you know, they had their own crew. They had their own block. And if you wasn't from their block, you wasn't coming over there making no money. They, you right. know, they, we mm-hmm. we look at the guys from up north. Those was hustlers, players. That's where the pimping game came from. That's where the Black Panther thing mm-hmm. came from. So it's a whole different thing. When it comes to you got guys all of a sudden, soon they get a record deal and they become platinum. When it comes from down south, now all of a sudden they from Treetop, they from Piru, and they all this type of stuff. <laughs> once they got a record deal, that's sh- shenanigans. Because you know we really, we you know I have friends, man. I, I just turned fifty years old. Luckily. I was a gangbanger for 35 years. I just stopped gangbanging four years ago. I did 23 That's years of my life in the penitentiary, so I, I, I know that. Damn. And the cold thing about it is, man, these dudes that get get these record deals and all of a sudden they big and bad, now they out here talking about they Piru. Right now that I'm talking to you, I'm on Rosecrans and Wilmington, Treetop Piru right here, front, Fruit Town Piru right here. And these rappers well, aren't around here. here. You know what I'm saying? But well, these rappers are not around here. You know what I mean? Gangbangers, no gangbangers. So you got rappers, man, that, and it's a shame. And it's it's like a slap in the face because you got people that really live this life, not because they want to join the gang, but because they grew into it and it's what they knew. I was a runaway. Yeah. And it was, a, it was the pimps, the gangsters that took care of me and raised me. So, you know, that's what I represented. And it's just sad that you got dudes that grew up in the valley, dudes that grew up somewhere else, and all of a sudden when they get a record deal, they start gangbanging. And it's, it's, an, it's, it's, it's sad because they they losing they, they can lose their life behind it. You well, know? definitely. Yeah. 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 Well, I wanted to build real. on that. I, hold on. I wanted to build on that. I mean to cut you off. So, like, um, you know, speaking of, you know, rappers that's gangbangers or whatever, uh, you know, right now, you know, the hot, hottest topic right now, is uh you know Takashi six nine, like what's your thoughts on that? Yeah. Did you did you see his interview actually um, earlier today on the Breakfast Club? When it comes to somebody, see, it's it's gang banging the clip and blood thing. I think even the blood stuff, you know, and I got homies that's blood, power rules, no 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 down to them. But right now, being a blood has become a fad. Everybody want to be a blood now. All of a sudden, you know, yeah. uh, I did fed time from the eighties. 
did no mm-hmm. other state outside of maybe Arizona, uh, Utah on the West Coast, no other state ever accepted the Crip and the Blood thing, especially New York. So now I'm like flabbergasted, like why is there bloods in New York when they did not adapt? They still don't even listen to our music. You took it's like that happens. It happened like in ninety eight. Yeah, it was in early like, nineties. Ninety okay, just around my now area. Like I yeah, just, I just like bam, they was just there. You know, it was just, it just, yeah, just like, happened like an overnight type thing. That's what I'm saying. So how did that happen? Nineteen ninety eight. The Crippin and Blood started in the late sixties and the early seventies. Well, definitely, and if I can come in on a minute, because uh, because nephew, because my, because Loke and Mike, I definitely want to get y'all opinions, respective opinions yeah. on this, uh, and please uh, check me on anything I may omit or outright, you know, get wrong. Now, in terms of what you, because uh, there's a lot of stuff I want to get into off of that in terms of where it started with y'all, um, because there's still a lot. That a lot of people don't know about the origins and really yeah, where it all started. Yeah, now, yeah. But we're, so I'll, I'll be, I'll do the cursory of it because my co-host will tell you I can go long with it, but we'll keep it basic <laughs> from the perspective of what it goes yeah. down with. Of course, what you know representing TTP. Yeah. You know, yeah. and of course, we know about one of the most distinguished of all time rapping and producing. Of course, the legendary great DJ Quick. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. We know about, and um, and of course, one of the illest on the mic right now who hasn't gotten his just due, Slim Fo Hunted. You know, and also, of course, you know, YG. Um, and in terms of the whole blood culture, you know, Pyru, of course, you know, because uh, a lot of people don't know that that is, that technically, that is a separate entity, yeah. you know, um, that is separate. You know, blood broke off from Pyru. Um, but also too as well, um, in reference to, because my knowledge of the East Coast blood started with OG Matt, who was born and raised in Los Angeles and moved to New York and ended mm-hmm. up starting the UBN, what, what that yeah, would be yeah, known as the United thing. Blood Nation. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I heard, yeah, I heard the um, same thing. Too. You're accurate. Yeah, so um, I wanted so Mike uh, and and uh, Lo, because you're both from the streets and y'all both know. Um, if there's any if there's anything that y'all could clear up, because as far as my knowledge of the, you know, um, East Coast element of blood, that goes back to the '90s. Now, at one point, the FBI, you know, the feds were saying that the Bloods were the fastest growing gang in the country. Where at one time, during their inceptions in 1971 which was a mix of a lot of other gangs. A lot of people don't know this, and I, from my, and I could be wrong with some of the ones I mentioned, but I know it was a mix of the smaller gangs, gangs come together, where you had the Slawsons, you had the Family Swans, you had the Businessmen, the Gladiators. Uh, are there any that I'm missing that uh, ended up coming together? Well, as, as, as far as the Businessmen, the Businessmen end up becoming, they, 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 a lot of them are Crips. Um, okay, they're Chris. Okay, okay, thank and, you, thank and you. The, 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 when, when it came out, it was two different sections. Bloods didn't branch off from Pyro. It was two different areas. You had the east side, okay. you had the west side. There were always Bloods in Los Angeles when they came out in the 70s, but they came from Chicago. A lot of them Bloodstone villains, a lot of them dudes Stone, from over there. Key Rogers. Yeah, Key Rogers, yeah, yeah, correct? yeah, Black yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that, that's true. They were already yeah. Bloods. Pyro came about in Compton. Compton did okay. their own thing. Compton gotcha. did their own yeah. thing. And even back in the day, they used to kind of like didn't really like deal with each other because one was in L.A., one was in Compton. But the thing about it is whoever moved to New York and influenced them, it's the same thing as when I went to the feds, I was one of the first crew from Los Angeles to get caught in other states selling drugs in the 80s. So when I went to the feds in 1987, it was like nobody from New York, nobody from Detroit, D.C., nothing ever even knew what a blood and crip was, and they actually were against us in the penitentiary system. They did not accept that type of stuff. But what would happen, like you see now, is like a lot of guys from L.A. moved to these other states. Moved to these other states. Some of them, you know, they, you even had dudes that were straight considered busters, outcasts, snitches that got booted out of their hood out here in L.A., ended up moving to Denver, Colorado, got out there playing hard, and ended up starting to yeah. stuff out there. 
they yeah, so like, they they recreate, like they a, recreate a lot of the themselves people, and shit. And believe you me, a lot, when you go to who brought Bloods to New York, who brought this to these states, seventy five percent of them, when you go down to the origin, they not nobody here. They're gotcha. nobody here. You know what I mean? This difference. You know, like Chicago, those are real gangsters. When you go to Chicago, oh, yeah. Detroit, when you go down south, those are real gangsters. They was gangsters wherever they were. A lot of these dudes that went and started this stuff, it's real easy. I went to Spokane, Washington, and moved in a little uh, little housing complex, and because I was claiming Linwood Crip, after a while, it was like four or five people saying Linwood Crip. Had I allowed that to continue, it would have been a gang right there. It was just that easy. It was just that influential. But it's not like that. And I'm going to be honest with you. And I'm going to be honest with you, anybody that's in the industry right now that was a true gangbanger from Compton, Watts, Linwood, Long Beach, or whatever, they are not in the rap industry. Well, mm. definitely. And if, we, they um, are, and we, if, they, if they are, they're kept underground. You got people like Dove C, who is not an actual gangbanger, but he, he's from over there in that area. He's from over there in 111. They keep, they keep dudes that have real gang ties, kind of keep them they, you, you don't really see them. Yeah, they keep them get as a muscle. Yeah. They, 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 they will keep yeah, you. They will keep you. And, they, and, always said, I, and I always said shit like that. Like, you know, basically, they, you know, what most right of these rappers now, are talking look, about, you know, beating yeah. up everybody and killing everybody. Like, you can't yeah. really be yeah. they, they that they true to know. the game and have your face all on TV for the whole nation to see. Yeah, like, shit, the feds be after you. You shipping all these guys and. Exactly. It does happen though. It does happen that some real, real motherfuckers get in and say some shit, and then get and look where it puts them. Like, like for example, X Ray. Look what he See, what right happened that dude. Look, you know what I'm saying. this is another thing that we look at from being out here because we go to the L.A. County Jail. When you're a real, true, documented gangbanger, they they used to send us all on the crip module, send us all to the blood module. It was these dudes around here, man, back in the day that was catching little dope cases. They went to jail. They was not in the gang module, but they are multi-millionaire now, and they rapping and they banging stuff on 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 on, on their songs and on national TV. And a lot of times, real dudes that's doing life in the penitentiary, people that lost their brothers, their mothers, their fathers to this gang life, this is why we really don't, you know, we feel a little offended about it. Nowadays, things have changed. You can pop up and come from Africa and come to somebody's hood and get socked up and be from their hood all of a sudden. So, you know, it's just a different area, man. It's a whole different era. But we here, you know, like I say, man, as you know, I'm I'm just glad that finally I was able to see the light and didn't want to see nobody dead no more, man, and was able to walk away from it. You understand? That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's you think the, so. do you think the, yeah. now you think the whole thing with the whole check-in policy is what started all this madness? The check-in? Yeah. Yeah, well you know where the cat's gotta pay the fee to rep the set. Well what in the what what yeah. goes on I'm, and I'm gonna be honest with you and I don't care who listening, if you know who I am, I'm bonafide. Hey, we off the like club. Sh- okay, hey, I'm, same, I'm gonna say like Shook like like Suge Knight for instance. And I'm gonna speak on him. I went to high school right. with Suge Knight. I was in high school in the jazz man when he accidentally got in there because he needed an elective. And we put him on the Congo. Suge Knight was never a blood, Suge Knight was never a gangbanger. His uncles were. Gotcha. His uncles, Ronald gotcha. and Donald Knight, were a bona fide gangbanger. They were bona fide Tyros. But because everybody knew their uncle, Sugar got, you know, everybody loved Sugar, though. Sugar went to Manwood High School with us. Everybody loved Sugar Bear. We know him. But when the money <laughs> came and all this, you know, when the, when the money came and everything and he got his business, of course, he grew up in my Pyro. So who he's going to go give a job yeah. to to keep him covered? Now- now, actually, now my, he had a show. Yeah, hold, hold on, real quick. Hold on, real quick, G-Bay. Like, we actually had a show. Like, it was like last year or two years ago. Remember that show, King, when we were talking about? I think that is. I think that's when Shug just got a um, locked up or whatever. And we had a caller. A, a caller. A caller had called in, and basically was like, yeah. it was a female. She was basically saying, like, "Remember that shit, King? Right? She basically called yeah. in, was like, man, look." He he's really not about that life. He's a street hard. When he was in high school, you know, he used to, he used to play football. football. Yeah, yeah. She said all of that shit. Sure, yeah, I gotta um, find that show in the archives. He was number fifty-five. We had to say that. 
We had to say the disclaimer after that. We had to say the disclaimer oh. after she said all that no, no, shit. No, no, like, no, her no, views do not reflect <laughs> off the cuff radio. It's, it's the truth, okay? So let's, let's imagine this. Let's imagine this. Okay. Chicago plays mm-hmm. a different game. When they have kids in their neighborhood, they're square, nerds, and stuff like that. A lot of times they invested in them kids, bought them school clothes when their mom and them was on drugs to keep them in school. That's why a lot of the disciples and a lot of the, and the vice lords are in the police force. They're in law, you know, they're, they're lawyers. This is how they do it. In California, people that were nerds, we kind of gave the boot. If you wasn't with right. the gangbang, we chased you out of the hood. Suge didn't have to go through that because his uncles were a bona fide power rules, but at the same time, Suge was a football star. And, you know, yep. through his hustling and however he dangled and got, and, and got his money and did his thing, what's the first thing? If you grew up, if you was a square dude and you was a church boy and you was a football star and you lived in the middle of the project and you got millions and millions of dollars, what would be the first thing you're going to do? Well, let me go Fine. back over there where I grew up at. And hire me some of these killers over here, you know what I mean? So that's where that came from, and that's honest. And I definitely. grew up hanging and over there, and I grew up hanging in the mob before I was gang banging. So I know, you know, it's just it's the people that really have gang ties. They you never really see them mm-hmm. on the BET award or award shows. I mean, no sh- shout out. Hey, hey, I love YG music, but you'll never see YG over here standing behind David Junior High School. Now, Quick mm-hmm. is a different story. Quick is a different right. story. Quick grew up over here, but he still was not a gangbanger. Who, DJ Quick? No, DJ Quick was not a gangbanger, but he's from over here. He's from the treetop Pyro area, but he's not a gangbanger. But he's one of my favorite here. producers he's, of all time. Like, that's my that's, favorite that's producer. That's, like, that's yeah, my he's favorite either producer. Him, it's either him it's or different. DJ Premier. That's like two of my. That's like my top two see, uh, producers it's a difference, of all time. It's a difference from people. If you look at it, let me tell you who's genuine. Everybody knows that uh, 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 Quick Quick grew up over here. He grew, I'm right here in their hood right now in Rosecrans and Wilmington. Quick grew up right here. Kendrick Lamar grew up right here in Westside Pyro. They grew up here, and it's like, you know, you can go to their classrooms, and your teachers and everybody will tell you they grew up here. You can go, and their neighbors still know what house they are. It's a lot of rappers that's claiming stuff. Talking about they from Fruit Town Pyro. Chris Brown probably ain't never been to Fruit Town Pyro in his life, other than a video. So, you know what? I gotta come in. Uh, look, 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 look. I gotta come in on that too. I gotta come in on that for a second too, because uh, on a, on a couple of things, because uh, definitely Mike and I want and I want, first off I want to thank you for clarifying that because the BET documentary, which was I think we can all agree was actually pretty good because they broke down mm-hmm. Shook from the beginning and. Yeah. You know, they broke down the whole story, and basically, you know, one of them is uh, one of his guys who was with him during the back in the day said, you know, what most niggas was trying to get out of the street, Shook was trying to get into the streets. Yeah. You know, you know, and um, and that you know he was at UNLV on a full scholarship, yeah. and even got even got a even got a free agent contract with the San Francisco 49ers until he got in that domestic dispute with his oh, girl, wow. and then they they kicked him off yeah. the team. Well, know. yeah, he lost the contract. Um. But we had another guest. We had, um, but we, uh, well, this is about another individual. We won't go into that. But definitely now with Chris Brown, I'm all the way here in Hampton Roads, Virginia, Chesapeake. Um, we we didn't get the quote unquote gang phenomenon until the early 2000s, yeah. yeah, which was really, and we never now. We the body bags. We was getting busy on the body bags, zipping up them toe tags. Yeah, you know, yeah, during the yeah, 80s yeah. and early 90s, in terms of the drug, in terms of the drug crews that were running the street. But yeah, we never had colors. Yeah. yeah, and uh, with Chris, Chris is from Tappahannock, which is further yeah. up north from where I live. You know, and as much as Chris is talented, and we've all talked about this on the show, you know, in uh, private conversations and public. I think Chris is super talented, but I think Chris has started playing some very dangerous games associating himself with individuals that in a culture he did not come up around. Exactly. And, and it's dangerous. And, I, you know, and, and, and Tupac is the greatest of all time, and I hate to see that he too fed in that. 
because, you know, like I'm saying, man, have you noticed you got guys like, just say, for instance, when you go back to the old 80s, early 90s rappers, above the law, they really was like from the area they were from. They Pomona. Got, Pomona. Pomona. They got to a certain plateau, and that's where it stayed at. Dub C been slept on for years. One but eleven. He got on. He got to a from one eleven. But he's not a one yeah, eleven crib. He's not a he's not a one eleven neighborhood crib. Not no bonafide, packed up, went out and did no shootings. But he's from over there in that area. He only went so far. But when you look at guys like Cam from Watts, he only went so far because he's a he's truly affiliated. When you look at the the rappers and the artists that are truly affiliated, Sebo from up north. When you got all of these guys, Spice One, these dudes was really hustlers before in the street. <laughs> so we had, we had Sebo on the show from before too. Exactly. These dudes, it's bon- these dudes Bonafly, where if the gang task force come, their name is actually in there. If you notice in the industry, yeah. they only went yeah, so far. They only went so yeah. far. You know, so yeah, you know, uh, when, 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 when the queen just mentioned that the other day, I mean, when she was just on the show, just saying, like, what do we think about that? It's, it's crazy that people wait until they get a record deal, they get on the BET Awards, and then now they gangbang it. And what's so crazy is society kind of accepted from that point. But, uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's crazy, man, and it's, it's a dangerous game. You got people, man, that really yeah. live that life and lost yeah. their lives over there. Yeah. It wasn't nothing. I didn't go join the gang because I wanted to be tough. I was a runaway, and that's who took care of me. Definitely. And yeah, Logue, I yeah, wanted to get your... Yeah, I was about to ask too. Logue, too. I was about to ask Logue, too. Like, what's your, you know, what's your take on that, too, Logue? Logue the Smoke, like, you know, what are you... What's your thoughts on that? Uh, on, on what part? Uh, about, like basically, you're, you know, you're, with, these, yeah. with these rappers, <clears throat> you know, as soon as they get famous or as soon as they oh, get yeah, a lot yeah, of money yeah. or whatever, they just want to become yeah, gang like, members all of a sudden. Yeah, I think that's kind of corny because people that that's really live that kind of life, you know what I'm saying? And people die for that life every day. People bleed for that life, you know what I'm saying? And and, and then people just come on and oh yeah, hey, let, let, let's make this to the truth. I'm gonna I'm gonna start uh, flagging right now, you know what I'm saying? Uh, come on, please, you know what I'm saying? And, and we were talking about Chris Brown earlier. Uh, I actually uh, one of my one of my homies parlay starts from the Pueblos and shit. He the real who I kind of introduced me to the shit down there. So yeah, definitely low. I'm gonna get out. And definitely low, um, because I the def- and definitely uh, with what nephew was saying about it, because you grew up in the Bay, so you know about the exploits of you know guys like Sebo. You know, um, you know, Brother Lynch. You know, of course, Spice One. I didn't. I knew Spice One was a goon in the street. I didn't know that he was uh, gang affiliated. But also, as well, you know, um, even with you know, and this is only because you know, off the cuff radio, we tell facts, but we don't snitch. We know about E40. You know that E40 was heavy at one time in the street before he. (laughs) Yeah, look, I tell anybody. I look. He hustled. You laugh about. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. that dude, E-40, one thing I can say, see, like I said, man, I got people from up north and East Oakland, man. Like I said, if you want to see hustlers, them dude is hustlers. E-40 yep. is a hustler, homie. That dude worked. Yep. He worked. Yep. He wasn't going to go for nobody <laughs> sleeping on him. <laughs> he pushed it. And, yeah. you know, he can't. Yeah, he pushed it. And they still sleep on him. <laughs> that you know, man is no E-40. always been a beast. He yeah, always been a beast. Like, it's like, you know what's a crazy beast. thing? This dude, like, can you even have a conversation with the guy? <laughs> like, you sit there and be like, what the fuck is this dude just said? He's like, I'm putting the hat on. Like, what the fuck? That dude is a beast. <laughs> that nigga made up his all fucking language and got everybody exactly. learning. Exactly. Yep. I'm beefing with E. I'm beefing. I'm beefing with E because he was supposed to drop that damn dictionary and he ain't dropped the damn dictionary. He was supposed even to even he don't know book. what the hell he be saying. That's why. <laughs> even he don't know what he's saying. Like, he's like, like, <laughs> when he got mad, I'll tell it. Put the Pinocchio in there and everything. That's going to take some time, my nigga. I'm waiting yep, on yep. that book. <laughs> <laughs> I'm waiting on that book, that but book, definitely that book is going to be so complex terminology that you gotta take, you gotta figure out, and that book did. Yeah, 
cheating. And if he write it, he got to use some words that he got to look up just to learn the meaning of what he just wrote about. That nigga, you going to have some, some reference sheets and all kinds of shit. <laughs> yeah, but he, yeah, but he's all... Is that, yo, what's happening, Weeper? Hey, what's happening there, Weeper? <laughs> Over there with the with the cocoloso polopo polo like what the fuck like what? You niggas about to get splat. <laughs> That's what your shit was stuff like that. <laughs> that that right now. Yeah. Like that. Yeah. I, I can say some shit. You got to throw your hat like a pancake, you know, pancake juice style. You know, pimping. <laughs> like what the I'm fuck is you talking about? <laughs> Would it sound fly? Not- Cause he be popping his collar. He be saying that shit while popping his collar, like. Tell with me a what straight ass face. That nigga said it with a straight ass face. It's just looking GQ like a motherfucker. Now definitely. Now, now, my, now, uh, now for um, for Loki and Mike because I want to get y'all opinion on this, especially because number one, y'all are both knowledgeable from the street aspect, from both the music and the. Um, you know, from the street. Uh, first off, hello. When you start, what was the in terms of starting your own label? What was the biggest? Uh, what was the most? Everybody talks about being a boss, but very few people have the determination and discipline to actually follow through with it. And you were able to accomplish what you did in great abundance. Um, and you know, and Mike, from where you're at, when you've seen a lot of these guys come up, you know, trying to make that transition, what are some of the challenges for our listeners out there that they may have to understand in terms of building your brand for yourself? In terms of most notably getting a local buzz and then being able to sustain it enough to make it a viable commodity for profit, you know, pushing product. See, yeah. It took me years. Like, I had Wise Guys Global. I started Wise Guys Global as a movement in 06. Right. But I made it a label last year. So okay, okay, okay. What got me to that point was I was with uh, I was with Steady Mob, and then I was with Who Mag Distribution, then I was with Dog Had the Records in Long Beach, which is a, under the DPG umbrella. Then I was with Havoc, uh, the Rhymes from the South Central Cartel, with his label, One Hood Entertainment. So I kept watching the business. I kept seeing how this shit was done. You know what I'm saying? I kept seeing right. good. I kept seeing bad. I saw all types of shit. And at the end of my last deal, when I when I was done with One Hood, you know, shout out to Havoc, me and him, you know, we had a little bump in the road, but me and him, we all good now. So shout out to Havoc. Anyway, um, when I when um, when I was done there, I got a few different offers from different labels, and I was like, nah, I'm I'm done. I'm I'm done signing contracts with other labels i want to do right. myself you know what i'm saying so after that i just had to get determined i had to find out how to get distribution you know there's mm-hmm. there's quite a few ways to get distribution out there so i had to figure out how to get my distribution for my label then i had to figure out my business plan how do i want to function this label? what do i want to do you know what i'm saying and right. even now i'm Still, I'm still, you know, uh, moving chess pieces around. You know what I'm saying? Trying to get there to get to the end. You know what I'm saying? To get to get to the goal. So you just got to be very determined. You can't give up, and you got to have a lot of sleepless nights. You know what I'm saying? And just keep going. That's that's that's, that's how to do this shit. Um, and then in the industry, there's so much cutthroatness. So that's one thing in my life. Well, I ain't trying to have no cutthroatness, man. I'm, I stay straight up with all my artists. Get into the end, you know what I'm saying? To the 100, you know what I'm saying? So, what advice yeah, would you have? <clears throat> what, what advice would you have for um for the artists out there to try to avoid the cutthroats? Is there a way to avoid them, or is there nah, any signs? No way to avoid them in the entertainment industry. You just gotta make sure that you that you vet the people you around. But the thing is, you are gonna come across cutthroats. There's gonna be people that's gonna smile in your face and stab you in the back. That's just up, part man. of the game. You gotta learn from it until you know. You know what I'm saying? I've seen a lot of cats. You know, I've been I've been rapping since the '90s, but like I said, oh four is when it popped. But during my time rapping, I've seen a lot of cats come, a lot of cats go because they can't keep up with the grind. The grind is is like I was just talking to somebody today. I said I was like I'm addicted to the grind. I love the grind, but every once in a while I feel like oh shit, I just want to not give a fuck right now. I just want to lay back, but I can't. Because once you get into it, you need to be term- determined to, to just keep on going. Yeah. yeah. So that's a- definitely. 
definitely a hey, nephew on, Mike a, because okay, okay, we got a call. Go ahead, King. Yeah, yeah. We'll take this call right here. Six is one, you on? Yeah, I'm on this lady tree. Why is guy global in the building? I probably yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, you know really? calling in. You know I couldn't miss this one. But I've been listening through the whole show. And big salutes to y'all off the cuff radio for having us on, you know what I'm saying, Mr. Loco. You know what I mean? See, Not a oh, problem. the mastermind. You feel me, my bro? You feel me? He <laughs> tell me to keep shit, focused. They, they really about to take over King. Look at the wise guys pulling up. Yo, they pulling up. <laughs> they pulling up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In your window. <laughs> In your trunk, nigga. <laughs> like, look, God, look. Fair, they got the oh, chop on. We can't do nothing about this. <laughs> Definitely, 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 Lady T. We, we want to get your input too, um, as well. Um, and I want to, and I want to get you and Mike's opinion now, Mike. Now, you know, Lowe was talking about what was going on where he's at, from where he's in Northern California. But we know about some of the independent labels, you know, and some of the people that were trying to get their situation down in Los Angeles, you know. Uh, you know, with a lot of independent stuff, and then there was some funk that came up, uh, you know, which they resolved now, but there was an issue, you know, with Ice Cube and Lynch Mob Records, you know, and then the issues he had with Cam and then some of the other people with, you know, affiliated as well. Um, How often did you see that out your way in terms of where a lot of, you know, friends turn enemies, you know, allies become adversaries? What did you see down your way with it? It's for me, well, Mike. Who is this for? Uh, it could be well for Mike, but late, but uh, Lady T, we want to get your opinion as well for yeah, what you ahead, deserve. Man. Okay, Mike, go first. I go. Whichever, who else? Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, you know, man. Um, you know, being 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 from the, the Los Angeles area, down here, man. A lot of stuff is, you know, people. People are greedy, man. A lot of stuff happens, man. You know, a lot of times with us down here in the hood, because somebody feel like you from the same area, because, you know, it's kind of like crabs in a bucket. We have that syndrome down here in Los Angeles. Like, nigga, you know, if I started with you, I should finish with you. So a lot of stuff, a lot of beefs and stuff happen. I've heard a lot of this and that. Like, man, I talked to J.D. from the lynch mob a lot, at least like every mm-hmm. other week or so. He calls me collect. You know, his beef is more personal, but, he, you know, that man, uh, just he been in jail. He took a life sentence, man, for something that he didn't do. He just kept his mouth shut. And, yeah, you know, shout out and, to J.D., because we had him on the yeah. show. Shout out to J.D. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah I'm, 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 I, got a, I got a project coming out right now called Free J.D. But, um, man, um, it's, it's, yeah, as for that, you know, as far as, like, what Loke was talking about, as far as, like, the brand and how to do this and, you know, the grind and the hustle, I'm a little different. And rock box a little different. It's like, man, if you coming into this music industry automatically looking for a grind, automatically looking for a payoff, automatically looking for a paycheck, then your grind is going to be a little harder than others. We do it because we mm-hmm. love it. We do it because we love it. You know, we come, me and rock box come from the 80s when rap first really started. So, you know, when Sugar Hill Gang and all that came about, that's when we were growing up. That's when we were in junior high school, high school. Mm. Rock Box, like I say, man, I went. I didn't graduate from high school till 86. So in 1984, 85, I sit back at school. We didn't have no hair on our face. And there was a rock box with the whole, uh, at lunchtime, the whole crowd surrounding him. And he having rap battles. He uh, beatboxing. You know, I was a drummer. I'm a musician. And the only reason I even really stepped in the rap is because I ended up, when I got saved, I accepted Christ. I started coming to church. I found out that I had a voice and I could sing a little bit. So when they put me in four different choirs, and then I had a little rap lyrics from back in the day when I used to rap with Mossberg. And then when we were younger, um, rest, rest in, in peace, peace to Mossberg, Mossberg. you know, yeah. we had our little crew. Yeah. I told Rockbox, I'm like, man, you know, I done did time for murder, I done did fair time, I done got out of life sentences, I done got out of being addicted to drugs, I done been shot and all of this homie, I say so I'm going to take my rap lyrics put it together Damn. with this gospel music and I just want to give a message, I never ever ever even right now me and Loke be talking he be like well you know this is how many streams you got on this music, I don't even care, I only do it because I like it and you know I went back to doing West Coast rap just to give my <laughs> 
uh, uh, my shout out to the streets, but actually, I, I, we, I make music and CDs just because I like doing it. I love doing yeah. music. Can, you know can, can we rewind that real quick? What you said? What have you been through? I didn't mean to cut you off, but <laughs> let's rewind that real quick. Um, what have you been through again? For the for the listeners out there, say that one more time. I uh, when I first started gangbanging, I ran away from home at 16. When I was 19 years old, I went to the federal penitentiary for selling. I got caught with a kilo of cocaine in Waterloo, Iowa, in 1987. Oh, they gave me 45 years. Uh, Ooh, I don't know Jesus. how it got to be God, but Jeez. I came up out of it seven years later. They said they gave me the wrong sentence. I got right out, man, and caught two attempted murders and three armed robberies. Man. Went back to jail, come up out of a life sentence. I done been shot. I done been on drugs. I done sold drugs. I just stopped gangbanging four years ago, and I'm 50 years old. And the cold thing about it, I still yeah. live dead in the middle of my hood. Yo, L. Lo, yeah, y'all need to come together and try to. This dude needs a book. You ever thought of you ever thought of writing a book? Like, you ever thought of writing a book? Now. Like, y'all, <laughs> yo, man, yeah. yo, I, uh, y'all should come. Yo, Lo, yo, y'all should yeah. come together. What up? Make that shit happen. Like, yeah, this dude needs a uh, book. He has a story to tell. I, I earned a degree in Bible and biblical studies. I graduated Bible college uh, three years ago. Earned a degree. I'm a UCLA student. Uh, I'm a minister at my church, so you know it's a big turnaround, dog. <laughs> Next thing you're gonna say, yeah. yo, I'm an astronaut. I used to be a cowboy. But all jokes aside, yeah, yeah, my guy, like record. you definitely got a story to tell. <laughs> yeah, y'all want to hear a yeah. dope record? Make sure you pick y'all people's album, Controversy, because that album, Controversy. from the intro Every... to the to the final yeah. song, tells a story, and you can hear it's everything from. He was gang banging until he gets shot and finds Christ. And like I was yeah, saying, he put out a bullet out of his crew. Like, was it last year or the year before that? You, you had a bullet that was stuck in you that that that, yeah, that got pushed yeah. out through your body. It just came out like four, five, six months ago, last year. Yeah, last so you know, yeah. man, that's crazy. Yeah. I said, um, yeah, but you know, in the rap game, we all got a story. You feel me? Yeah. Like today, I one. was watching Roxanne, Roxanne. She got a story. Don't yeah. nobody, everybody thinking that your life is just perfect because you're this artist. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. But right. your music Maybe speaks for you. Everything I say, yeah, I still yeah. put me on. You feel me? That's why I want to get back to what you were saying that I ever see groups break up and the stuff that I cut through stuff. Yeah, I have. You know what I'm saying? I've been in the game for uh, since the 90s. You feel me? Yo, yo, the first one put me in Ice Cube on my first track that, that made me on the West Coast. You feel me? That Bronx that made me Lady T. Do you feel me? So it's like keep on the lynch mob introducing me to them. So I've been around all of them. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And um, right now today it was a it was a blessing. You feel me? And a lesson. You know what I'm saying? It let me see that um, sometimes again you think people as loyal as you they not. You know what I'm saying? Even with the one hood thing, I don't want to bring it up like that, but it's just real like that. It's, it was a lot of real riders in that hood. You feel me? For one hood. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. everybody, we went our separate ways. And much love to have it as well. You know what I'm saying? But it just didn't work out. You know what I'm saying? Some things just don't work out. You got to keep it moving. But that don't mean yeah. we can't still be friends. It's some yeah. people that, that think, get caught up in that, so, that. Oh, fuck you. I don't like you see. no more. Cause, what you say? Let me ask you something, Lady G. Do you think, um, like, it was just too much, too much of um, people in one hood? Because, you know, like, you know, everybody has their own personality. You know, everybody got egos, what may have you. Do you think that's what it was that made things complicated? Well, I, I, well a little bit, but not, because we still was a team. Some of us was tighter than others. You know what I'm saying? Some of us believed in loyalty, and some of them was with the bullshit. You feel me? With the backstabbing and cannabis shit for the ones that was working hard for one hood. That's how I feel. It was a lot of us pushing that issue, and a lot of people just sitting back riding. You feel me? But we was out there getting our issue, and then a lot of people got jealous of the ones that was out there getting their issue. You feel me? And was talking behind really backs nice. and all that. You can't do that. You know what I'm saying? When you a team, you a team. You feel me? Loyalty. You don't go cross each other and talk behind nobody's body back. Because if you got something to say, you should say it to them. If that's your yeah. friend, if that's your crew. And if you got any kind of loyalty or any ounce of honesty in your body, you feel me? So I felt like this. Lady T got to get low. 
I got to ride with Loco because at the at that time yeah, yeah, we both yeah. was going through the same thing. You feel me? And we yeah. saw a lot of mm-hmm. things. I mean, it's much love to one hood. We ain't no haters. You know what I'm saying? We love them. We was cool. You feel me? Like I said, it's a lot of people that can't get away, that, that break up and don't want to be friends no more and it cause a lot of problems in their life. They mad for years. I ain't with that. I'm going to forgive you, but I'm going to move on because I'm not going to allow no motherfucker by yourself on me and spin me up and shoot me out. It's just like that. Feel me? So, yeah. Your teamwork makes a dream work. Well, you got yeah, well, you got a team divided. It just ain't going to work. Well, Lo, yeah, Lo, yeah, Lo, you trying to say something, Lo? Yeah, yeah. So, the other day, I was on the phone with Havoc and I was talking to him. I was like, man, you know, I learned a lot from one hood, and I was like, and and I, I, I was telling Havoc that I'm catching myself sounding like, like I hear Havoc in my voice when I'm telling people stuff, when I'm doing things, you know what I'm saying, how I'm running this like You learn but every once in a while, yeah. I, I catch, like, the pieces that he, he passed on to me, you know what I'm saying, so, so it's a lot of love for one hood, you know, we, we all had our little stuff, we over there, but, you know, it was some, it, it was some great, and the greatness that 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 um the whole thing was about unity. Unity is what yeah. I'm bringing to wise guys. That's why I got people from the Bay. I got people from L.A., Compton, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, Texas, Louisiana, Australia, Canada. You know, I'm bringing people together and uniting people. You know what I'm saying? And that's 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 what I'm trying to do here. That's what that that's the lesson right there. Is. I mean, you yeah, know that is a blessing. It was. We did learn a lot too, and much love to have it because if it weren't for him, we wouldn't even been doing this and shit. We put it together. You tell me it just it didn't work. It didn't work, and much love to them, and I wish them the best. But why are they doing this bitch? No, I'm just. <laughs> ah, <laughs> now look, now, now look. Shout out to Lady T. Shout out to Lady T. Shout out to Lady T. Keeping it front with the spunk. Now, Lady yeah, yeah. I want to ask you. I want to <laughs> ask you a question in reference because we talked to uh, nephew Mike and we talked to Loke about the whole gangs of, in terms of people coming into the you know coming into the game now, where gang affiliation is not only you know seemingly accepted but it's celebrated in the current sense. I want to ask your opinion with Cardi B because you know you know she is blood you know from, um, from Washington Heights. And I wanted to, in that situation. Wait, 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 what, Washington Heights, what is that? That's a, that's a, that's <laughs> a neighborhood in Washington Heights, is a neighborhood in New York. That's, and she's in yeah, New, yeah. New York. And she a blood? Yeah, they do. How yeah, the hell blood. did they? See, uh, this, uh, this, 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 if you are Please. not from California, and I'm just telling you, and I swear to God, you're not from California, and this ain't where you from, I don't care how big your hood is. If you are blood or crip and you're not from California, we do not respect you here. And I'm going to tell you that. Out there, they can do that. They come here with a oven. It's, it's, like, it's like us starting uh, Latin Kings and watch, knowing damn well that the Latin Kings, it's not going to work, and I don't understand that. We be sitting out here like, what? They can't, you can't be a blood, and you're not from Los Angeles. Well, definitely. You I mean, a, if you went from San Diego and lost your, no, no, you, 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 you're doing something else, Jack. You're doing something else. <laughs> well, he's doing something else. Oh, me. He's in California. You know yeah, what I'm saying? But definitely. I see, I see, but definitely. But then, but then, but they, 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 they That's crazy. Yeah. That is crazy. Yeah, that because, is crazy. Um, because I don't it's know how much female art that is that's bananas. Yeah. That is bananas. <laughs> yeah, because, um, For a female artist that be out there like that, well, yeah. to me, I feel like this. I really don't respect it, to tell you the truth, mm-hmm. about her coming out there like that. Okay, I can see that's where you from, but keep that on the low. But for you to be out here and kids is watching you and yes, they looking up yes, to you and they singing yes. your songs, I don't think that's a good look. Here yes, 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 yes. There you go. It's no baby singing it. her song. Yeah, they following behind yep. her. So don't be surprised if you be seeing these little girls with their rags on and all that. Cause they looking up to Cardi B. You feel yep. me? 
Yeah. Yeah. Cardi B is fully. Yeah. She's actually fully clothed now. That's why everybody thinks yeah. she's pregnant because like she put on a few little pounds. She got a little well, belly. She, is she, she got is a little bare belly. But my thing is, she didn't say she was a blood when she was on hip hop. Uh, love that's what I'm saying. That's what, was, what is this that's what I was trying to allude to. Well, that's what I was trying to right. say. Like, oh she says that all the blood references. It's like you said a lot of blood references, but she never claimed like, yo, I, that I am a blood. She never said that. She oh, said right. a lot of blood stuff here and there, but she never really said herself, I'm a, I'm a blood. If I, well, if I, well, and, if I can and, come and, in and, on it. Okay, and go, then, ahead, go ahead. Hey, hey, I'll, look, I'll go after and, and, and to uh, and, and and I don't know if Loke the Smoke noticed the actual term blood come from not and not only the guy that moved, not even not even for that guys from up north and Oakland and San Francisco used to use that word. I young blood. It was what it was. What, it was yeah, what young people blood. called each other. Yeah, young blood. Like, like, you know, young I blood. 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 Yeah. Black. Hey, blood. Back in the seventies, that's what black folks. Yeah, that's how we. Yeah. We didn't say nigger. We didn't say what's up, my nigger. We said what's up, blood. Back in the young day, blood. in the early seventies. Yeah. yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If I Lord. if I can yeah. come in on a second too, because I want to try to add a little bit more, uh, because you know nephew was like really shocked when I said that. Um, because, you know, um, because of course you're OG where you're, you know, you're OG from your side. That's all, you know, yeah. where it started. But as, like I said, when you're going into the nineties, um, that's when we really saw the, uh, yeah. proliferation of gang activity, you know, started yeah. with, you know, and then of course, and then it was one part too, that I wanted to get to, you know, but we kind of got, you know, um, but it was also about the eight ball alliance in the early nineties, which is what united, mm-hmm. you know, um, you know about that, you know, where the vice lords united with blood and gangster disciples were united with crip. You know, you have this yeah. folk nation, people nation. And that mm-hmm. was basically uh, laid down in Kansas City from where and we I have my history and, correct. And and but ahead, the, the whole ahead. thing about it is we don't even acknowledge that. Not from out here. You come to LA and mention that we're gonna look at you like we don't know what the hell you talking about. We get it from this the sword. <laughs> this, we get it from this the sword. I'm telling you. I, I, and, 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 and I'm so sure about it, you know, even even right now, our hood picnic tomorrow. I'm going to go to a picnic tomorrow with nothing but Crips. And it's like that. We, it never, the only thing that really tied us into it, that kind of tied us and tightened us up with the vice, I mean, with the disciples, were simply the, 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 the way that they wore their hat. We kind of fed into it. But we never really, like UBN, I heard you mention UBN. United Blood Nation came from out the penitentiary where all the Bloods and Pyrus and Los Angeles and the penal system got together. Got you. Yeah. Got you. So, uh, you Man, know, all of this. I heard about you, that, too. And right now. I heard about that same thing, too. And, 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 and right now, everything that you're telling me, I'm sitting here like, wow. <laughs> like, for real? <laughs> like, where the hell that come from? Hey, you know, you know, hey. when Cardi B. When Cardi B came to California, she was calling the Bloods to come protect her. Did y'all hear about that? Yeah. Um, I didn't know that. I didn't hear about that one. (laughs) I didn't didn't hear about that one. one. But one one thing about Cardi B, outside of that mess, I I go for the underdog. You know what I mean? Like I said, man, I lived in the street. Even as a kid, prostitutes raised me. So, you know, I know about hustle. And I give it up to Cardi B, man, outside of that other stuff. That gangbanger, you ain't from out here. You're not a gangbanger to me. But right. outside I of that, man, I respect, I, res- yeah. I respect her grind, man, because I watched her come mm-hmm. from the bottom when they disrespected her because she was a dancer. And that's where I give right. her. That's where my respect comes in from her. I love people mm-hmm. that were on drugs that came out of that. I love people that was hustlers mm-hmm. and don't hustle no more. I love people that gangbanger don't but gangbang no more. So that's where my respect then comes with Cardi B. It's like, man, I watched her. She was a dancer. They disrespected her like she wasn't nothing but, and she's shining. I give her that. Just leave the blood yeah. and all that. They need to leave that. Let, stuff let me out ask of you. It. Let me ask you guys something. Let me let me ask you guys. Do you do you guys think that um. Certain artists do that just to maintain a fan base. Yeah. Because, you know. Yeah. 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 You think because so? That's that's what <laughs> here. Because that's yeah, what Because that's what Yeah. Because this even artists out here do that. Do you know how embarrassing it is, man? One time I went to Venice Beach and watched Bloods Chase Game. I mean, it's kind of, it's all kind of stuff go down because these guys really yeah. aren't, aren't like that. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's a shame. I look at on these videos and they ripped up and crypt up and sit back and be like, Jesus. And so it's not just people from other states. It's 
the dudes that's in the industry, right? And and what's so cool? I believe that the industry are kind of like blood suckers, because yeah. the more they do this, the more notoriety, the more fame they get, man. And these these people can actually lose their lives behind this. Yeah, yeah, like yeah they wouldn't even care. Now they wouldn't even care. That. They won't even they pay. Even they care. won't even pay for the funeral. The industry yeah, don't even it, care. That's what I like most of my Real music and, and get the money off the music. They get royalties in their mind. Y'all get killed. Yeah, y'all get thrown in the half of my it's, pocket. It's, it's sad when you're dealing well, with you know, somebody like me that lives this. his life. Yeah. Talking about this, yeah. we gotta. So we gotta talk about this. This dude, like, cause we we alluded we alluded it from before. This dude, um, six nine Takashi, like, you know, cause you know, right now he's basically like the talk of the town now. Like, what's your thoughts on this too? Like, he's basically saying that she can go anywhere and can't get touched. Makes like this dude th- believes that he's basically the most invincible Invulnerable. gangster on Invincible, the planet. Yeah. Hey, remember. Remember the oh my God! I laughed at him. Uh, remember, remember Kill Our Rights? That's you, Low. That was you, Low. Talking. Yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. This is my answer to this. Remember the album Still I Rise and Pox? Right. Yeah. yeah long on that album. Oh, you can be cut. So that's, that's my answer. You can be cut. No well, there's, there's no there's noise drowning you, low. There's like I think you can probably next to a TV or something. Like your your voice is getting drowned. What? Come like uh, come yeah, closer. Hold on, hold on. To the, you hear me better now? You hear me better now? To, yeah, we can hear you a little hear. better. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I had my phone on the couch. So yeah. Anyway, I was singing. Um, uh, I was singing my answer to the whole six nine situation where he thinks he's super me. Um, well, there's a song on Tupac's album, uh, Still I Rise, with the album on it, called, uh, called You Can Be Touched. And that, that, right. that goes, you know, for this situation, because anybody can be touched. Nobody's keeping me. You know, and definitely, yep. low because you make a great point with that. And, um, and uh, because we know, because, Mike, you're in the game. You know, you and Lady T are in the game. So y'all know about the situation where he started yeah. mouthing off to uh, the, 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 you know, we affectionately say this when we say the old man, a.k.a. J. Prince down in Houston, you know, where he said about his sons that, you know, basically his sons ain't going to do nothing. They can suck his dick. You know, wow. and then, uh, yeah, you yeah, hear about that? Nothing like you hear about this shit? Right. Yes, yes, he he he. he you ain't never about that shit. Damn. Yeah. Wow. You, you, I don't. You still there, nephew? Much? Of, on the real, like I don't pay attention to a lot of this shit that goes on. You know what I'm saying? I just, I know about the no fly zone shit with Takashi Six Nine. I I know about his song flag, but there's a lot of shit I don't pay attention to. That. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Yeah. Um. On, but I mean, the fact is. Uh, well, hold on, like everybody's sounding real muffled. Yeah, everybody's sounding real muffled right now. And yeah, I think we lost that few months. Huh? Five six two, you on? Yeah, yeah, yeah this is me, this rock box. What's going on, man? Hey, what's going on? Hey, what's up now? What's the deal, y'all? I've been checking y'all out. <laughs> The Ryan Rock in the house, baby. I ain't been in a little show. How you feeling? All right. What's up now? <laughs> and we're uh, chopping it we, up right yeah. now with the whole. Definitely. Look, we want, we want your input, that? too, man. First off, thank you for calling in. We want your input on everything, man. Please. Oh, hey, man. Yeah, I've been, I've been hearing y'all, boy. Y'all too much. <laughs> yeah, y'all too much. Yeah, y'all too much. Uh, what you want my input, input on what? What, you, what y'all talking I mean, about? Y'all talking about a lot of things. Well, we, well, we were talking about this. Right now, we're talking about the 6 9 situation where he got into it with Jay, with Jay Prince's sons, Jazz, uh, most notably. But, um, You know, in the whole but situation. Hold on. Before anything- and, Hold on, T Max. Mm-hmm. Well, anything? Somebody got their TV blasting, playing Good Times or the Jeffersons or something. Somebody, please turn Shine the TV field. down. It's, it's it's killing it's killing. Okay, the it ain't me. Please. <laughs> I think you, you can't hear nothing now. Okay, okay now, cool. Ahead. Yeah, 
But I don't uh, hear but yeah, just, yeah, but uh, just a situation where, um, you know, because obviously you've been listening, so you've heard us talk about how a lot of artists and what seems to be the override, overarching narrative is that, which is there's a fine line between confidence and crazy, and Takashi, for some <laughs> reason, has gone into the asylum of lunacy, thinking that his celebrity <laughs> is not going to make him end up a carcass in the casket. Um, right. And, and, this, and the situation, you know especially... Doing? You know, he's, he's, they, it seems like he revels in the fact of being that roach that won't go away, being a pest, provoking real gangsters. Not necessarily from a gang side. You know, of course, rap a lot is not, quote, unquote, a gang. They're called the mob. And there's mm-hmm. a reason why nobody right, fucks right. with Jay Prince. <laughs> there's a reason nobody yeah. fucks with him and his sons <laughs> or any of his kids. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've never been in them parts, too, so I feel you. Yeah, I've been in a war too. Yeah, yeah. It's like, well, yeah, it's really like that too. Hey, but, uh, uh, you that know, that uh, I think if, 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 if we wanted to sum it all up, you know what I'm saying? I always say, you know, uh, boys always got something to prove, but men know who he is. And kind right. of leave well, it like that. Yeah. You, you're either That's one or the other, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and these days, you know what I'm saying, us out here, doing this music and everything now, man, you know, a lot of people always try to shy away and say they don't want to be no role models, but uh, if you step up to the plate, that's that's what's going to happen because these kids yep. are listening to us and everything like that, you know what I mean? So we got to stay influential to them too, you know what I'm saying? Give them something to look up to for a change because it's been a while, you know what I'm saying, since it's happened, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, you know. I look at I look at uh, uh, hip hop as like my kinfolk or something. We don't been through a lot all through the years, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, from uh, folks dying and everything else, and you know, just a whole yeah. bunch of different stuff that done went on now. But we still stand it though. You know what I mean? Yeah, we still stand it. So you got to you got to look at the overall picture too. We still standing. It's just you know uh, obstacles of life. You know. But it's also um, how we should stand it, though, because some people standing crooked, and like Lady T said, a lot of people are looking up, a lot of young little girls are looking up to Cardi, and we trying to get, what I, what I said earlier, everybody waiting until they get grown and on the mic to start getting these gangs or start talking like they're in a gang, but at the end of the day, the real gangsters is trying to get out the game, not... Not because they scared, but they seen too much going on, like my said. And, and my thing is, with all of that is, that with, see, I might have a death wish. At the end of the day, you know, you don't have to be a scary dude. You don't have to be a pussy or whatever else. But at, to, to come at a nigga with that, with with, with Jay Prince's kind of reputation, why in the hell would you gun for that nigga for fame? Fame is going to cost you your life. And at the end of the day, your family might be able to spend, your record labels might be able to spend that money, but you're not. You know what I'm saying? And some of this shit yeah. is so how to stand in. And instead of standing Right, tall, well, you know. Uh... I'm just saying. <laughs> I, I just, you know, like myself, I try to just, you know, stay in my lane these days. I ain't trying to be in there right. by the way. Of nothing like that. I just like doing this music and putting it out there and performing and, you know what I'm saying, putting a smile on the face and, and people even move, uh, move a feet or a hand or two or arm or a leg, you know. <laughs> and, and that's uh, why we get good music. People like you that have that and, and, you know what I'm saying, and everybody leave out of there happy with us. Right, right. Well, well, that's what it is. You know, you got to think about it, too. Look how long it's been since, you know what I'm saying, the uh, money been making the music. The music then don't make the money no more. Right. You know what I'm that's saying? You know, you know if, you, if, you got, if you got the right amount of cash right now, you could be number one on the uh, radio right now with no problem. You know what I'm saying? Money's still keen on all of it for right now. But what it is, we got to start. We got to get back to the essence of it, you know. To the roots yeah. of it, to the people who was here before us, don't you know that they efforts not 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 you know in vain or nothing. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, yeah. it's starting to come. You know, a lot of people out, a lot of them out here rapping or whatever. They rapping about stuff, but they don't live none of that. You know what right. I mean? They don't right. live none of that at all. You know what I'm saying? It's like a style now. I remember, you know, I know uh, over here on the west where we, I, I used man, I've been doing this since '84. You know what I'm saying? So. 
you know what I'm saying? I remember going to Venice Beach and battling, you know what I'm saying, battling folks and they making the movie Breaking out there and you had Michael Collier, the comedian, you know, Red Hot Chili Peppers out there jamming, uh, the boys from Carson, you know what I'm saying? Everybody was out there trying to get they, they grind on. That was all grind back then. Venice Beach, yeah, you get out there and if you got noticed out there, you know what I'm saying, you was the man or the woman or whatever you was doing, you know, and, um, you know, and so through the years, man, you know, I, I love the hip hop. You know what I'm saying? That's why I do it. I love hip hop. I don't, I ain't ashamed to say it, tell it, show it, none of that. You know what I mean? You know, you know, and, and everything like that. So it's like we got to get back to the essence of everything, man. And that's what's happening right now. That's why we all on the radio right now having a healthy discussion on hip hop and different things that's going on and all like that. Because, you know what I'm saying, hip-hop was originally supposed to be to reach and teach. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what we used to do back in the day. When you heard a song or whatever, and they came from Texas or from New York or from somewhere else, and they told their side of the story, it was cool because you finally got to hear what somebody was doing somewhere else besides your spot. You know what I mean? And it, and it was like a formative thing. We, you know what I'm saying? We kept up. You know what I'm saying? You got to think about it. Hip-hop had already broke down, got us our first black president. You know what I'm saying? You got to think how big it is now. It ain't nothing little no more. So, yeah, it's a lot of, you know what I'm saying, uh, rigmarole in it. You know what I'm saying? You know, but it's what you make of it, though. And what we got to make of it now is, is, is make it back to the, it's time to bring back that love to hip-hop. I remember I used to hear hip-hop, man, and man, it was just a, it was like a feeling. You know what I'm saying? You'll see you see homies out there breaking or popping or locking, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know what I'm saying, uh, tagging, doing the graffiti, DJing, you know what I mean, beatboxing, all that. Man, it was, it's still a culture, you know what I'm saying? You could, you could, no matter how it sounds right now or whatever right now it is, you know what I'm saying, it's still, it's still hip hop, it's still a culture. So, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, uh, lately they be talking about mumble rap and all this stuff. Well, how I look at it is that, you know what I'm saying, uh, they going through what we went through, too. You know what I'm saying? You know, oh, really? sometimes when somebody don't understand what's going on or whatever, this and that or whatever, yeah, they're going to have something to say. But, you know, some, some they relating to somebody. They into it, you know what I'm saying? And might, we might not agree on it or nothing like that because, you know what I'm saying, we from another era. You know what I'm saying? We from an era. But, you know, uh, the people before us let us do us. We got to let them do them, too. But if it's something that ain't right or nothing like that, if it's something that's just going to, you know what I'm saying, be a detrimental to different things like that, then that's when we're supposed to say something. But, you know what I'm saying, I, I ain't never met nobody who ain't bumped their head. You know? Oh, we got uh, a yeah. few other people. Oh, you know yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, so, it's, you know, hey, man, can I get my beatbox off? Oh, uh-huh. Oh, huh? yeah. Can I get my beatbox on, man? Yeah, definitely. Check this out. I got to say something real quick. Because I'm at my job, so I got to get back over here. Um, but, oh, okay, uh, okay, hey, Lowe. Hey, what's up? Rockbox is my partner, is a partner of, of Wise Guys Global. So anything else? Uh, yeah, he can, he can shed light. And I think Travis Bryant calling in, everybody calling in. So, hey, you're looking out and having us. Much love to the uh, Off the Cuff show. Um, and then keep up the support. Wise Guys Global is here bringing back the real essence and love of hip hop. And we're going to continue to do that. So, there you go. We appreciate you guys well, from work and giving us the time. So, all of y'all, we appreciate it for sure. Right. Well, we, we appreciate well, y'all so too, much. for sure. Thank you, man. Yeah, for I'll sure. be in touch with you on the book, man. I'll be in touch with you on the book. All right, cool, cool. For sure. All right, y'all. Y'all take care. You too, you well, too. All right. All right, you too. Thank you again, hey, look, Thank yeah, you. Real quick before I go, uh, Penn State just dropped his, his single, uh, How It Happened Today. So make sure y'all go check that out, too. All over all iTunes, right. Amazon, CD, or not see, uh, Google Play and all that shit. So, yeah, go check that out. All right, y'all. Much love. Rock, rock, do the damn thing, man. Up right, for sure, baby. Gotcha. Yeah. All right, one. Hey, look, look. Look, 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 I wanted to say something. I wanted to say something before everybody got off, but they're going off quickly. Is Uncle still on there? Is Uncle Mike still on here? Oh. He gone? Yeah. 
Uncle Mike, yeah, still I'm, still here. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still here. Right, I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So look, cause cause I'm not the one to be, you know, talking once y'all get off like I'm talking and so I'm since you the representative for him, I'm gonna say it while you still on at least. Cause I know I heard you say earlier, all of y'all said that y'all don't respect any games that's outside of Cali. And and I definitely respect that because I've heard that from not just y'all, but a lot of people in Cali. But I do know that a lot of people from Cali migrate to different places. And um, when the guy that was just yeah, talking was saying that's, something that's about. How, that's how it happened. That's how it happened. That's how a lot of it happened. Yeah, and, and that's what I was saying because I know a lot of people. Yeah. I'm, I'm from the H. I live in the H. I'm in the H right now. And so, you know, I, I know they got the mob out here. They got all kind of cliques, gangs, and everything yeah. else. But at the end of the day, I do know a bunch of niggas that, that, that are, are for real banging. They go to Cali. They have the meetings every whatever. You know what I'm saying? They sit down and, and, and they talk. And, and so I wanted to get that out there because at the end of the day, you know, I've heard a lot of people from Cali say they don't respect it. But at the end of the day, I, I always see, you know, Cali come down here, organize different shit. But I always tell people, though, because you got OGs and you got people that's, that's just getting in and all of that. But at the end of the day, when you're OG. You know what I'm saying? That your talk is different. So in, in my case, when somebody come up to me and tell me somebody want to be down and all of that, the first thing I'm going to tell you is, and the first thing I tell the niggas that bring them to me is, I'm not the other nigga that's going to tell them how to go and pull a maneuver and, and how to pull a cape and all of that. What I'm going to tell them is some, some, some real shit shit. I'm going to give you the game and I'm going to let you know. This is what you're getting into, but you need to think on a bigger on a bigger level. Because at the end of the day, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but when when the gangs really started in in in, in Cali all over, they were really fighting against the injustices with the police and the government and how they was doing their community. So I always, as an OG, go back and tell the people that's coming to me for advice or trying to you know do whatever they're doing. I let them know, look. You got to know where, what your goal is, what you intend on doing long-term in life. You got to understand what you're doing right now is going to have an effect on you and your community. So it's just, I just want everybody to know, yeah, wherever you at, everybody got a story. Everybody, you know, whatever you claim, whatever you don't claim, there's a story behind everybody's struggles. But at the end of the day, don't let somebody else's struggles hype you up to create struggles you don't have to have because in life, right. you do have choices. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? And you exactly. can, you right. can get the bottom yeah. of the barrel, but if you can find a better way to make it to the top than to create some struggles just because you heard your favorite rapper going through it or because you heard yeah. a gangster in the street go through it, that's not what it do. And the other thing I wanted to say before I stop my rant is the fact that we all we all talked about, you know, real gangsters don't really get on the mic and they don't get past a certain level. And, and, and my experience and, and everything I've lived through, whether I've seen it or experienced it myself, Gangsters move in silence, and that's how they stay on the streets. You know what I'm saying? All of this shit right. that niggas are snitching on the fucking mic and going out and telling stories that ain't even theirs, but they getting everybody pissed and gangsters. But niggas it's rather not. make money than it's to not. snitch it's in the not. street. It's not. Same and the only reason, and the only reason, the only reason why I mentioned that, the only reason why I mentioned that is because, like I said, I, I got rounded up in the first roundup of L.A. niggas going out of town selling drugs in the 80s. And what I found, even when I was in Spokane, Washington, I went out there with a bunch of a, with a bunch of eight trade gangsters, and they got I stayed out there so long till you had about fifteen, twenty dudes that was from Washington claiming eight trade gangsters. And even though you know you had the real ones that was going back and forth, when things got bad and they got hungry, a lot of them dudes that was from Washington came down here thinking they was gonna get welcomed. A lot of them got robbed and killed. So I'm just saying that from personal experience because I'm still kind of I'm not in the mix, but I see it. My thing is, is that, you know, I just don't, me personally, when, when we went out of town and all that, I just didn't, I'm like, man, don't come out here recruiting because you have other people that get, you know, you have people from other states that see some new stuff, man, and, and they, they get into stuff that they're not really into. That's what I'm saying. And, you know, yeah. and, 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 and that's the fact of the matter is you go behind them walls out here in California and a nigga asks you where you from, and you and you say you from Hoover, but you was born and raised in in Missouri. <laughs> it's just you gonna be in trouble. That's all I'm saying. Hey, and, and, and you ahead, ain't lying on the call. I just want to make this point because he's he's not lying, and that's why I said I, I definitely respect where you coming from and what you're saying because I didn't been back and forth to Cali. I know I got people from Cali, my family from Cali. So at the end of the day, me saying, oh, I'm five dudes Hoover, but I'm from Houston. 
make I you be a dumbass. It, it's not what you do; it's how you do it and how you approach the situation to every person that you ever meet. Because at the end, if you in one hood, if you from one hood, you're not finna go to another nigga hood and think you finna wreck shop. Period. I don't give a fuck what set you claim. If them niggas didn't see you come and be introduced by a nigga they they know and respect, you gonna get tried. And so that 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 you it's, it's how niggas approach the shit. But for all the kids listening and all the upcoming rappers and young adults that don't know their way yet and trying to figure out where to go, I'm not telling you to go that route and get respect. I'm not saying it. What I done been through is what I done been through for my own personal reasons. But at the end of the day, I'm still living and breathing because I know how to do what I do. And I don't ever try and step on nobody toes, disrespect nobody. I'm real about what I do. And I'm real about when I meet somebody explaining who I am and where I come from. If they don't like it at that point, I'm quick to tell them, well, I respect your opinion. And if you tell me, fuck you, then we got problems and we're going to go down. But other than that, if you respect where I'm coming from, respect what I say, I'm going to respect you any day. I'm just saying Y'all can't Hold on, let me get that out of my car. Hey. 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 And I also got my man on Travis Bryant on too. I had to get him a shot. Ah, damn. Up. You know. Hey. You done spit on him, homie. You done preached on him, you know what I mean? Yeah, I've been wilding for a minute though. Church out this month. You got what? right? What? You know what I'm saying? You went you went Snoopy Gospel on him, homie. That's for sure. And, <laughs> and I think a lot That's of the sure. levels too, and um, you know, the, I think a lot of the levels too. Uh, when you're looking at the affiliations of where it really starts at, because this is where it gets tricky. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm Virginia seven five seven Hampton Rose, born and you know, born and raised. You know, this is the turf for where I birthed. But I've always had a healthy respect for the West Coast in terms of what goes on out there. You know, I know. East 97 is crib. You know, I know Wilmington and Brazil, you know, you know that's blood. You know, you're going down, you know, Long Beach. That's nothing but crib, period. There are no blood sets in Long Beach at all. You know, and I tell mm-hmm. a lot of people, when you start especially dealing, and a lot of people know Hoover crib, but I'm like, a lot of people forget that crib, that because Hoover has got in so much trouble with the other gangs, they eventually broke off and became Hoover criminals, which their color is orange. See, this is shit I know from the studies. And a lot of people who will, and I said that to say a lot of people start claiming these sets, number one, without knowing the history. You know, in terms of a lot of people don't even know that Piru means Swahili, and Swahili means blood. You know, um, and for what we see out here, you know, first off, I got to give so much love to y'all out west from the East Coast because y'all have been, y'all got maligned so much, but yet and still, y'all brought so much to the table of giving us an experience from your side that we would have never known about. And for any knowledge that is an addition, it's always academic and it's always welcome. And hip hop would not be what it is without y'all contribution. So to the West Coast on my behalf, I want to say thank you, thank you, and thank you. Shout out to K Day, shout out right. to Ice T with Power, nineteen eighty six. You know, you know, because that was really the West Coast album that 